Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the last September session for this beautiful little monthly series. I will be continuing on in October, Emma and I. We'll continue on in October, uh, but we're going to shift gears like we talked about last week, that this kind of figuring out uh, the roots of the tree that make us who we are, the principles that we live by, so important because next week, starting in October, we're going to really look at are we in alignment with our actions, our words, and even our thoughts with those values. And a lot of times we, we claim that something is very important to us, but then the the dialogue that we have up here or that we speak or in the ways that we act towards other people really is so far out of alignment with what we're proclaiming to hold as, as deep truth. So just something to look at. I'm telling my students um, that these are the two hardest months of the year. I think it's according to like the teaching themes that I teach. I think it's just really hard. I think um, looking at some of these deeper things, can be a little bit challenging for us. And so we tend to avoid them and say, everything's good and everything is good, but it's also nice just to kind of do some housekeeping for the soul and just kind of get rid of some of the stuff that might be preventing us from being our absolute greatest self. Okay. So we're going to start um, in a seated position. I, I'm using blocks today and you can just sit with a cr easy cross-legged and and then put those blocks underneath your knees. If you don't like that or don't need that, you can just ditch the blocks. I find I have a lot of tightness through my hips. So just bringing the blocks underneath my knees gives my body just a little bit of support. I like my hands to be kind of clasped, clasped over my ankle, or you can have them on top of your knees. We're going to create a really tall spine here, though. So try not to uh, hunch the shoulders and lean back. We're going to start with elongating the spine. What that does is it gives the lungs plenty of room to fully inflate. And when we fully inflate, we actually have um, some benefits to the parasympathetic sympathetic nervous system. And I was reading some research several years ago that said that our cortisol levels can actually rise by slumping, just by slumping. Our cortisol levels can lower by having great posture. So if you start to feel sort of that internal stress building up inside your body where we get those signals that our body speaks to us, like mm, kind of some feelings in our stomach or maybe a little shortness of breath, something like that, it's a great opportunity just to stop whatever you're doing, elongate the spine, pull the shoulders away from the ears back and down. And just take a few really good breaths and just notice how things sort of shift, right? The thoughts become a little clearer. The signals that our body is sending us get a little softer. So we can change what's going on on the inside of our body just by changing the shape of our spine. It's really what the ancient yogis were trying to teach us related to the asana or physical part of the practice is how we can move our bodies into a shape that is going to have the most health benefits for us. Okay, so that's where we're going to start. We're going to start seated, tall spine. That's a lot to think about, a lot to chew on. And close your pretty eyes. And think about the bottom section of your lungs. Start to inflate them. Let the breath rise up to the middle part of the lungs. Put some air there. And then go to the very top of the lungs. It's up high into the chest. Breathe there. And then empty the breath in one full long exhale all the way down, watching as the belly button starts to pull back in towards the spine. We're going to do that three-part breathing again. So bottom of the breath, middle of the breath, top of the breath, and then a full exhale, one solid swooping exhale. And do that again. Inhale. Keep going. Keep going, and then a long exhale. So now that you have become familiar with the three lobes of the lungs, those three sections, now make it smooth. And empty the breath. Take two more just like that.
And one more. And feel the breath come all the way down. Go ahead and open up your eyes, uncross your legs. We're gonna extend the left leg out to an angle, keeping the right knee bent. So I'm gonna choose to keep the block underneath my right knee and that just supports my hip. I'm gonna turn towards my left leg. I'm gonna aim my heart towards my toes, but it's definitely not gonna get there, but I'm gonna keep that tall spine. My hands are gonna go on either side of the left leg, take a big breath. And then push your heart forward. Keep the spine straight. So we're not looking for that roundedness just yet. Take a breath. Push the heart towards the foot. One more. Push the heart forward. Take a breath. And now round your spine. Let your head fall. Look at your belly. Look at your heart. And here's what's so beautiful to remember. That when we lengthen the spine... When we come into that three-part breathing, we clear out some of the clutter, those stress responses in the body and in the brain. And it actually gives us clarity to go back to those roots, to the principles, to the things that sustain us when life becomes hard. And it helps us to remember them and to access them and to pause for a moment and decide, is what I'm about to say or do or think supporting my roots. Start to roll your spine up to stand. We're going to shift the right hand behind us. Take your left hand to your right knee. Get long in the spine again and then spin your heart to the right. Take a breath and spin to the right. One more. And then spin. Come on back to center and let's take that to the other side. So the right leg is going to go out to an angle and the left knee is going to bend and the foot's going to touch that inner thigh. You can use a block if you'd like or not. Totally optional. Turn your torso towards your right leg. Lift your toes to the sky. Hands are going to frame the right leg. So this side's a little bit different for me. So I'm going to see where my body wants to go with this. Aim your heart towards your toes. Take a breath and then push your heart forward. So nice. Take breath. Push your heart forward. So beautiful. Okay, we've got two more breaths just like that. Finding that long spine. Haven't rounded yet. One more. Take a big breath. And now round your spine. Let your eyes travel to your heart or your belly up of the tree roots. The roots make up the essence of who we are based on our values, our character. And the tree above, what everyone can see, is sort of the what of who you are. It's the male or the female or the mom or the dad, the brother or the sister, perhaps your occupation. But it is the who that we are. The who of who we are is what sustains us through the storms of life. Start to rebuild the spine. Take your left hand behind you. Your right hand finds your left knee. Take a long breath. We're going to spin to the left this time. And if we don't know, take a breath, turn to the left. If we don't know who we are, and the values, and the principles that keep us steady and strong when life becomes hard, And the rest of us, those beautiful brand in this form, they're going to start to wither. They're not going to be as beautiful and vibrant and alive. So it's important work to figure out those roots and values. We're going to flip on over to all fours. I'm just going to set my blocks aside. I'm going to use them here in a little bit. And if you don't have blocks, that's not a big deal. I'll give you options. So we're going to come to tabletop and then find just a couple cat and cows. Not a bunch, but just enough to warm up the spine a little bit. And we're going to find puppy dog posts. Lay your forearms on the mat. Fingers are towards the top edge of your mat. Hips are going to stay high. And the forehead is going to reach towards the ground. This is an easier version of downward facing dog, which is incredibly calming. Grounding. We're looking for grounding postures today. Long spine. 
to allow the oxygen to do the work on the inside of the body and grounding poses to keep us kind of connected to more of that earth feeling, the strong and steady parts of us. Just a couple more breaths here. It's a nice restorative version of this incredibly beneficial pose for calming down the nervous system. One more breath. And then let your hips sink back to your heels and keep the spine nice and long. You might even reach your fingertips further out in front, feeling that nice long stretch through the sides of the body. Just behind the shoulders, we work our way down the back. We have a beautiful series of muscles that get really tight that causes us to actually want to hunch our shoulders. By keeping them stretched and long, you can find a straight posture a little bit easier. One more breath. And on your next inhale, rise up to all fours. We're gonna tuck our toes. Just a quick transition in down dog, not long. And then walk your hands back to your feet. So we're gonna go backwards. We're gonna come into a forward fold. If you prefer to have blocks so that the ground is a little bit higher, feel free to grab your block. I just have one right now. But what a block does is it brings the floor or the earth a little bit closer to the hands. Sometimes. We want to have that connection, but it's uncomfortable to have our hands touch the floor because we're tight in the back of the body or the hamstrings. So just bring the block into your practice and use it as a tool. We're going to shift the weight into the heels and just feel how that changes the sensation. And then find weight of the body into the toes. And then if you are using a block, Turn the block to the next level down, which should be on its long side. And tuck your chin a bunch. We're going to stay in this fold for about three more breaths. If you're not using a block, just let the fingers work towards the floor. It's important to find some connection to the ground in today's practice. So grab a book if you don't have a block, something that's going to bring the floor a little bit higher. One more breath. On this next inhale, we're going to roll the spine up leave the block on the ground. Come all the way up to stint. And when you get to the very top, turn your shoulders to the back. Roll your palms forward and just feel what happens from a forward fold from a physical standpoint as we have all of our blood, not all of the majority of our blood, but fills our head. We're down there for a while and when we come up slowly the blood returns through the body and it sort of acts like a washing system just washes down that nervous system so forward folds are great if you find yourself feeling an incredible amount of disconnect to being feeling grounded or you're feeling scattered and uh, stressed out okay so the opposite of stressed out is in control and grounded so forward fold is a magnificent way to quickly get that so you can take that long breath, the three-part breath we talked about, forward fold is another great option. So I'm going to grab both my blocks. I have to borrow it from Miss Emma. I'm going to place them on the long edge of my mat. I'm going to take my feet wide. Okay, toes are forward, heels are to the back. So I have a nice long foot. The inner thighs are, are being activated because I'm pushing into the outer edge of my feet. So what this does is it creates space through the pelvis creates a lot of strong legs. And then look at this spine, nice and long spine. So nothing like this. Okay, so we're really dynamic here. And then I'm gonna tee out my arms, take a breath and then lower my arms. So simple, right? Nothing fancy. Inhale, lift my arms. Exhale, lower my arms. Make it powerful. Keep that straight spine. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Just one more of those. Keep pushing to the outer edges of the feet. Activate the inner thighs. Squeeze the quads. This time we're going to inhale all the way up. Capture your left wrist. We're going to pull to the right. Inhale back to center. Grab your right wrist. Pull to the left. Inhale back to center. And lower your arms. Okay, so we're just trying to keep that long spine while we find a little bit of movement. Now bend your knees softly and you're gonna reach down for the blocks and bring them directly underneath the shoulders. Take a halfway lift here. So the spine is flat and long. 
and the shoulders are away from the ears. They want to creep into the ears. But imagine for a second, if you had a glass of water on your back, it wouldn't be spilling here. It's nice and strong. We're going to change that. Take a breath in, bend your elbows and lower the top of your head towards the blocks. If you do not have blocks, your hands are on the floor. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend your elbows, tuck your chin. Okay, so the block just gives us a little bit more lengthening, I would say, a little bit more access to lengthening. Exhale, bend your elbows. If you don't have them, it's no big deal. Take a halfway lift, bend your elbows. We have one more. And come into a wide fold to stay. Okay, so another four fold. Tuck your chin, shift the weight into your toes. You can lower your forearms to the blocks if that feels good. If you're able to get your forearms to the ground, that might feel nice. It's totally optional. One more breath. On your next inhale, we're going to rise up. Okay, so we're going to come into my favorite sort of opening through the pelvis and for the legs, staying low to the ground. Okay, so we're not doing a lot of flowing in this practice because it's grounding, right? We want to have that grounded sensation. Turn your left toes to a diagonal. Grab your block or your book or a pillow or even a chair. Bend your left knee a bunch. My yoga mat's getting very, very hot in the sun. <laughs> I have to move my foot a little bit. Okay, so feel that. Now we're gonna come to the other side. So you're just gonna pick up your book or your block or your pillow or move your chair and sink. Okay, so I'm pretty tight today. So we'll see how we go. Inhale back up, exhale, sink. Notice my long leg foot is starting to have a little bit different shape. That's okay. We're moving into Skandasana, which is an ex a very intense leg stretch. Deep knee bend, low to the ground here. Okay, keep going side to side. Should feel nice. Okay, one more each side like this and then we change it. Okay, let's stay over with the bent left knee. Sink and stay. Now move the block in front of that left foot. Take your right arm to the sky and get an overhead stretch. Feel that? So, so, so delicious. Big breath in. On your exhale, return the right hand. Prop yourself up and let's move over to the right foot. Now, if you can't get this low, don't at all for any moment think that it's not good enough. Use a chair. Maybe you're here. That's okay. You're still benefiting. Okay, so we're going to move the block in front of the right foot. Left arm this time. Big breath. Side bend, isn't that nice? So, so, so nice. Take an inhale. And your exhale lowers your body all the way down. Okay, so get there gracefully or not. I wasn't so graceful. Okay, so we're going to come into seated tree. Sticking with that tree theme, but not having to worry about dysregulating our nervous system by trying to balance on one leg today. We're going to stay low to the ground and seated. So you may or may not need blocks for this. I'm not going to use blocks this time. My right knee is bent. Right foot's tucked into my left inner thigh. Up, up to the sky, the branches grow. And it's beautiful. And on the exhale, the branches reach towards the left foot. If it doesn't get the foot, that's okay. Let it hit the ankle or maybe even the knee. Because we just did that side to side, side leg deep bend, where our hamstrings should be available to go a little bit deeper here, okay? So maybe your hands are on your foot. Maybe they're not. It's not a big deal. Now take a long breath in. Now bring your forehead towards your knee. It may or may not get there. Nothing happens if it does. So just relax into the pose. Relax into your body. Relax into that long left leg tree trunk. Let your branches of your body just drape over the trunk. Just a couple more breaths here. And we'll begin to rise up. Let's try seated tree on the other side. So the right leg becomes the trunk. The left knee bends. This foot is sort of like a branch that's coming away from the trunk. 
And then notice the straight spine. This is a little bit more challenging for a lot of people to sit up straight. We want to slouch. So you can always prop a blanket underneath your cheeks and that helps elongate the spine. Okay, reach your arms to the sky, grow some beautiful branches. Take a breath. And then on your exhale, reach for the right toes. May or may not get there. Reach for the ankle or the knee or even the thigh. You're going to use your breath here to get a little bit deeper. So take an inhale and then push your heart forward. Feel that stretch all the way into the glute muscle. Take another breath. Aim your heart towards the toes. This time you're going to spill over and aiming the top of your head or your forehead towards your right knee. So we've talked about these roots or the foundation of a home being four main foundation walls all month long. We've talked about if one of those walls or the roots gets rotted, the tree itself start to roll on up is not able to sustain the high winds or the storms that it has to endure. Okay. So what we are thinking about this month is what four values really are the things that we hold ourselves up in during storms. Like this is the one thing or the four things, right? That are so important to us. And as I've been teaching this all month long, something that has been kind of a consistency throughout all my sessions with all my different people is faith is a very important value for most people, whatever your faith is, but knowing that there is a connection and something that there's a belief in that keeps you able to handle the challenges that we all have. Okay. So faith is a big one. Family is another one that's, that I hear a lot. That's really important. I had some, some cool ones come up this week that I wanted to share with you because Hopefully by the end of this week, as we come into the end of September, you're able to identify your four. And I'd love for you to write those down, maybe in a journal, maybe on a sticky note, maybe in your phone. It doesn't matter because we're going to use them next month. But a couple of them that I thought I've never heard that before was passion. Passion is what steadies them when life is hard. And I, I just found that to be so cool. Authenticity is another value. That this particular man, I totally see it. Like he is who he is and he steps into himself every single opportunity. I thought that's a beautiful thing. Authenticity and passion were two that popped up this week. There was a couple others. Um, humbleness, humility was really important to a young man. And he felt that I asked him to give me a little bit more information on humbleness and being humble and having humility. And he said the minute he starts to compete and compare with other people or try to be better than, he gets lost. And then life throws him something really hard and his root of humility has started to rot and he doesn't handle it as well. So I thought that was beautiful. And this is coming from a young man who has a traumatic brain injury whose life is completely different than it was a few years ago. But he he's working it, right? So that's what I wanted to share with you this month is... This last week of the month, ground yourself, find opportunities to use tools like, like blocks in your yoga practice or spend time in nature and really honing into the trees around us and the smells that fall brings, the earthiness, slow down a little bit. If you choose to come to a yoga mat this last week of the month, let it be slow and mindful. Take opportunities to sink into forward folds. Keep your spine long so that we're, we're allowing that nervous system to come back down and so that we are able to be clear and focused on who we are, not what we are, but who we are. Okay, so the what is the beautiful type of tree, the elms, the ashes, the aspens, that's what it is. But the essence of the tree is the roots that sustain it. And that's where we're going. So for the rest of this month, which is just one week, try to identify those four roots, put them down somewhere on a piece of paper, come back to me next Sunday, and we're going to find alignment. For October, you will need to have a couple yoga blocks, a couple books, a chair, a small table, something 
that we're going to use to really hone into our alignment in our physical body and posture. We're going to break down some of the basics, but we're also going to be looking at alignment as am I speaking, acting, and thinking in ways that support the roots that I've spent a month identifying. Okay, so as always, super grateful for all of you people who pop in and spend a little bit of time with me on Sunday. So I'll see you next week.